Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a video on like the process broken down into five steps on how to achieve a near perfect foundation application. So I wanted to fit as much information into the video as possible but keeping it very relevant to what I'm talking about. So I tried not to waffle as much as I could and I also included as much information about the different skin types as I could. So I will leave the timestamps of where the different steps begin throughout the video in case you want to maybe revisit again or you want to hop along to maybe the foundation part or whatever so it'll hopefully make it easier for you to navigate throughout the video if you don't really want to watch it all over again if you are watching it again but if you have any other questions just leave them below and i'll leave any other information onto the blog as usual thanks for watching guys So step one is preparing your skin. So this is the skin prep time. And the most important part of this is to moisturize your skin. So you have to make sure that your skin is absolutely 100% clean before applying your moisturizer. So what I mean by this is if maybe you have had makeup on during the day and you are taking it off to reapply it during the evening, if you really want your next makeup application to go on absolutely perfect, make sure that you 100% take away and cleanse the makeup that you had been wearing earlier on so you can start with a nice clean base. There are optional extras as well at this stage. So one would be to maybe apply a serum. This is really good if you have maybe drier skin or more dehydrated skin. Another great thing as well for dehydrated skin is to maybe spritz your face lightly with a water spray. So something like the Max Fix Plus or the Mineralized Water Spray or one of the thermal water sprays by Vichy or La Roche-Posay and just spritz that lightly over your skin and then that'll be trapped in by your moisturizer, keeping your face nicely hydrated throughout the day. For me, for daytime, it's really important to consider SPF or sun protection factor when it comes to my moisturizer. So some people like to apply a separate sun protection factor or like a separate sunblock if they are in maybe more sunny areas, but a lot of really good moisturizers are out nowadays that have a decent sun protection factor. One that I use is this guy here, the Origins of Perfect World, and it has an SPF of 25 in it, and this is perfect for me throughout the day. So just make sure that you're applying enough. You don't need to heap on tons and tons. The skin can only absorb so much of the product and maybe it's easier to apply a lighter coating and then see if there's any areas that still feel a little bit parched afterwards and you can go ahead and apply a little bit more afterwards. I always use my fingers when applying moisturizer. I just feel that it helps to settle it into the skin and, and it's nice to almost massage it into the skin. This is particularly good if you have drier skin. Some drier skins that can be a little bit thicker if there's a lot of dead skin cells sitting on top have to work a little bit harder to absorb products. So if you really help blend it and massage it into the skin, this will help it absorb better into the skin. And just make sure you don't forget your neck either when you're applying your moisturizer. And another thing to remember as well at this stage is to apply a little bit of eye cream if you need it. And I really think anyone over the age of 20 or you know their mid 20s should really start thinking about eye cream as a preventative measure. And just tap it lightly over the area. Again, you don't want to apply excess because it'll just kind of roll off in these little bits if the skin can't absorb it or if there's too much product on the skin. A great moisturizer for someone with sensitive skin would be something like this, the MAC Complete Comfort Cream Moisturizer. So this is really good for anyone who maybe has high coloring or does find other products to be a little bit harsh on their skin. And it's really, really lightweight as well, so it allows makeup to go on really well over top. Then one of the most important things to remember when you have your moisturizer on is to let it set into the skin for a good 10 minutes before you apply any more products. This is just so that it's allowed to do its job on the skin and that it doesn't just mix in with whatever product you put on top and it gets its full benefits that way. One last thing to remember as well when it comes to your moisturizer is to make sure that if you are using an oil-based moisturizer, which will only really be used on very dry skins or maybe older skin types, but make sure that your foundation is oil-based as well. You can't put water over oil, but if you use a water-based moisturizer, you can use whatever you want on top of it. But that's one thing to consider um, because water-based foundations will separate over an oil-based moisturizer. So step two is to prime the face. This isn't absolutely 100% essential and it's something that I tell my clients that they can skip if they're in a hurry or they really find that they just can't be bothered. But if you do use a primer, your foundation will nearly always look and feel and wear much better than it would without the primer. 
and the foundation will nearly always go on a little bit easier. It tends to have a little bit more of a slip to the skin as well. You'll find that it just smooths on over the skin effortlessly as well. Wearing a primer though isn't something that I do on a daily basis. I'll do it more so if I'm maybe working where I know I need my foundation to look as good as it can from maybe eight or nine o'clock in the morning right up till six or seven in the evening. Or if I'm going to an event or out for the night where I might feel like I'm gonna sweat a little bit more and I need a little bit more protection against maybe oil or sweat ruining my foundation. I'm not going to be applying it today, but, but if you do apply your primer, make sure that you've waited your 10 minutes after allowing your moisturizer to settle in. And less is definitely more as well when it comes to primer. Too much primer will just become counterproductive and it'll just cause your foundation to slip and slide over the product if there's way too much underneath. So there's tons of primers out there nowadays that do different things. You can get, you can get green colored primers that correct redness in the skin and high coloring. You can get those mauve or more kind of purpley colored primers and that's to brighten up a sallow complexion or to take down too much yellow basically coming through on the skin. There's also mattifying primers. So something like the matte cream by MAC is great. So these are usually silicone based. Sometimes they'll contain some powders in them as well and they will help prevent the oil coming through and breaking through the primer. It'll almost form like a film over the face and it'll stop the oil coming through and messing up your foundation basically. Something like Max Natural Radiance is great because it doesn't overly mattify the skin but it does inhibit oil production throughout the day. And then something like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It is again a silicone based primer and it just helps again prevent that oil coming through your foundation, through to your foundation, but it also makes the skin really nice and smooth and it gives that slip because of the feel of the silicone. Some great basic primers for every skin type would be like the MAC Prep and Prime Skin Base. That suits pretty much everyone. It has very subtle shimmer particles in it that give a lovely lift to the skin. And then the Clarins Beauty Flash Balm is another brilliant cult one as well. For those of you out there with dry skin, which can be a little bit more problematic I find, something like this, the Illa Masca Hydra Veil is absolutely brilliant for adding a shot of moisture as well as keeping it in on the skin throughout the day. So this has easily become one of my favourite ones for dry skin. Another one I love to use on dry skin that's maybe a little bit on the dull side would be the MAC Strobe Cream. It's a little bit emollient so it does give a nice slip and feel to the skin but it has pearlized pigments in it so it gives a really lovely luminous lift to the skin as well. The great thing about most primers is that you don't really need to wait after they're on the skin to apply your foundation. So what I often do in the morning is moisturize, cleanse my face and moisturize, then I'll go off and have my breakfast and allow all that to settle in. Once my breakfast is done, I'll come back, then I'll apply my primer and jump straight into the foundation. And then for anyone out there who likes the idea of a primer but really doesn't feel like they have the time in the morning, something like the Soap and Glory 2-in-1 Foundation and Primer is brilliant because it has the primer in it and it's a just one step thing. So there are a few other foundations out there that are definitely worth googling for yourselves to see what else is available but that's another thing to keep in mind if you do want the primer without the fuss of actually waiting to apply it in an extra step. So step three in your foundation application is the actual foundation, of course. So my favorite foundations would be light to medium coverages. I'm not the biggest fan of full, full coverage foundations. I find that you should really rely on your concealer for concealing rather than your foundation. But I know some people with more problematic skin do prefer the fuller cover foundations, but Generally, I find with 90% of clients, I can get away with just using a light to medium foundation and it, you can build on this as well. Most of them are buildable, so you can add a little bit more where needed, but then using your concealer for the concealing. So I'm just going to use the Vichy Aerotant Pure Foundation here for today. This is one of my favorite foundations and it is quite a light coverage. Well, a light to medium again, you can build it up to a good medium coverage foundation. And I am going to use my Real Techniques Stippling Brush. So it's best to start off in the center of the face and then blend it out towards the edge. People will find that their most kind of discolored area tends to be the central area. Women, because of hormones and stuff, we tend to get red around the nose and sometimes around the chin. So I find it's better to start around this central panel and just work your way out. This way you'll be less inclined to use too much product as well. And always apply a little bit and add on rather than applying too much because trying to buff and blend out too much foundation can just be a nightmare and it'll often end up just going streaky and cakey. So I love to buff my foundation into my skin. I find I get a lovely flawless streak free finish from it when I do it this way but this won't suit everybody. If you have dry skin that has tendency to flake your best option would be to use a flat brush like this because 
then you can just brush it in downward motions. You could do it with this as well, but I think the inclination is just to buff in when it's a round shaped brush. These guys here, when you just flatten them down, it means that you won't be raising the flakes. If anything, you'll help flatten them in against the skin. You should always try and exfoliate those off anyhow before you do your foundation. This goes as well for anyone who might have a lot of downy hair in their face. This buffing action might cause the um, foundation to get stuck up, up underneath the hairs and stick them out. So just again, make sure you're doing everything in a downward motion. You don't have to use that flat brush. You can just use your normal brush, whatever it is, whether it be a round-headed one or not. But just make sure everything goes in a downward motion. I think it's important as well to only apply foundation where needed. I don't tend to apply foundation right up to my hairline underneath my fringe because my fringe covers it. And if it's windy outside, I'll always have a little bit of hairspray on the hair as well so it's not going to move and it's just a waste of product if it's somewhere where it's not going to be seen. I don't like to have too much foundation by the hairline either because it can look really obviously and caked. So that's why when you do apply it to the centre of the face first and work out, you'll find that there'll be less product towards the edge and it'll just be a little bit more natural. Now even though this foundation looks pale on my skin because it is paled down the colouring on my face, it's matching my neck and my chest. And that's the most important thing for ladies to remember. You match to whatever is on show here, not to what colour you want to be. So just make sure that everything does match so you don't have that floating head. If you do want to go darker on foundation, you'd have to either be willing to wear fake tan and bring it right up to meet the foundation, or you could go darker and just put on loads of bronzer, but I find this looks really obvious. It can just often look muddy, particularly when it is a pigmented powder like bronzer. So once I have my first layer of foundation on, I'll usually let it settle into the skin just for like 10-15 seconds, because sometimes it'll be a little bit tacky at first. And if I find I need a second layer anywhere, I'll just go and apply a little bit more over the top. Sometimes if you just stipple over the more problematic areas with your foundation as well, you'll find that it gives quite good coverage. But I would never rely on it to cover these blemishes that are showing through because the foundation just isn't thick enough, it doesn't have enough pigment. And also with these darker areas up around the eye area, I'm not going to rely on my foundation for that either. If you are using a sponge, I prefer to apply the foundation first with either a brush or your finger and then just use the sponge to blend the foundation into your skin. If you use the sponge to actually apply the foundation, chances are it'll, it'll just absorb too much of the liquid. It's better if it's a cream foundation because it won't absorb it as much, but I generally prefer to just use the sponges for the buffing and the blending rather than the actual application. Then when it comes to the type of foundation to use, there are general rules of thumbs but nowadays there's so many new technologies that anyone can nearly use any type of foundation but traditionally it would be the more liquid and cream foundations that people with dry skin would go towards and then someone with oily skin would go for an oil free liquid or maybe even a powder foundation but like I said this doesn't really relate to nowadays because there are so many new technologies out nowadays something like this the Maybelline Fit Me Anti Shine Foundation Stick is a cream foundation which I would have always avoided more so when I was a bit younger on my oily area, but this doesn't allow me to get too oily because of the new technology. Then the fourth step in the process is you to apply your concealer. It was an old-fashioned thing that concealer was always applied before foundation, but this isn't really relevant now, and to be honest it's a waste because you'll end up probably using more concealer than you need because you'll find that once you have your foundation on in the first place you'll probably use a lot less concealer than you thought you would have needed. So the only time I'd really apply a concealer before my foundation is A if I'm using a powder foundation and I need a little bit of concealer underneath or B if I'm using a corrective concealer. So this is one that has a colour so maybe it's a green coloured concealer to correct redness or a mauve coloured concealer like the primers I mentioned earlier on. I think one of the main things that people need concealer for are red blotches on the face and yellow toned concealers are the best thing in beauty makeup for banishing red tones. So green is an option but this is mainly just used in photography or even in black and white photography. It's not really used a huge amount in regular beauty makeup. Yellow will do the job pretty well as well. So for concealer what I like to do is, particularly for any blemishes, I'll get a good thick enough camouflage concealer or just a cream concealer and make sure that it matches my skin tone perfectly and bounce it over any of the problematic areas and then I leave it for a minute. If you have a bigger blotcher, blotchy area, you can just kind of brush it over. It doesn't need to be quite as precise. I'll put a little bit up here where I have a 
sunspot or discoloration. Just pat that in place. Particularly with these thicker cream concealers, it's better to use your finger to almost melt it into the skin because the consistency can be a bit thicker. Another red blotch up here, so I'm just going to bounce that in place. The sides of the nose is definitely an area for me that tends to get a bit red. And then I like to put a little bit down the centre of my nose where I have my most pigmentation. Then once I've let this sit over the blemishy areas for a little minute, I'll start to just use my brush or my finger, whichever suits, and blend around the outskirts of where the concealer is. By just blending around the outside, you're not going to remove the concealer from the most problematic area, which is either the blemish or the spot. And then you'll just make sure that it melts into the rest of the skin surrounding it. Again, it's nice to use your finger as well over the area if you find that it's just not blending in quick enough with just the brush. So you can see there I used a thicker cream, like more of a solid cream concealer for my blemishes. This is better for those more problematic areas, but not so great maybe for under the eye, unless you're quite young, maybe under the age of 20. Once your kind of skin starts to thin as you get older, it'll show up lines and stuff a bit easier and it'll tend to look cakier if you put these thicker consistency concealers underneath your eye. And a lot of the times, some of these guys as well can contain powders, like the Studio Finish Concealer, great for blemishes, for camouflage for anything like that because it has powders in it, it has a real high high pigment content but again I couldn't personally use it under my eye because I find it just doesn't look natural when I use it under the eye, it's a little bit too cakey so I tend to go for something a little bit more moisturising for my eye area. So these more liquid concealers, they tend to be more kind of runny liquids, are great for maybe more general blotches on the skin, not so much spots that have quite an, like a really obvious small intense red area but maybe this blotches that you know maybe a little small blotch that's easily covered or you know discoloration under the eye that needs a bit more moisture these are great for that something like the max select moisture cover by mac is brilliant it contains humectants and it continuously moisturizes throughout the day as well as offers a decent amount of pigment for coverage on any dark areas as well underneath the skin underneath the eye. Then a thicker liquid like maybe the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer or the Select, mm, Select Cover Up or the Collection 2000 Lasting Perfection Concealer. Those are kind of the in-between ones. You can use them on the more problematic areas and more blotchy areas or you can use them underneath the eye. I love the Pro Longwear for under the eye because I find I just don't need to set it at all. It covers everything, stays in place and I don't need to use powder because I hate to use powder underneath the eye. If I was to use a more emollient cream concealer like the Bobbi Brown Correctors or the Bobbi Brown under eye concealers I would need to set this with powder because they just have a little bit more slip to them they're a little bit shinier they have they're more emollient and I don't like these on very oily skin but they are nicer on dry skin or for someone who likes something a little bit richer underneath the eye and they like that slightly thicker coverage but I personally don't love applying powder underneath the eye so I tend not to use them as often I'm just going to apply this the Maybelline Fit Me concealer I dot it just where I need it. So I'm darkest here on this triangle area and on my inner corner underneath the eye. I don't need it quite so much out here. And of course out here is where we tend to get our lines and our, you know, our, our expression lines and stuff like that. So the less product on them, the less likelihood of the wrinkles showing up through your foundation or your makeup. So again, I'll apply this by bouncing the product either using my finger or a brush over the area. And then I'll go in with a clean finger and start to bounce it over it. This will just help smooth it out onto the skin and take away any excess. And then I'll often go in with just a second little covering there on the darkest area if there's anything showing through. When it comes to the colour of concealers, as a rule of thumb, pink or pink based concealers or salmon kind of colour concealers are the more brightening. This is personally what I use on a daily basis. Now I get very blue discoloration in here on the inner corner. So the pink doesn't 100% cover that blue. It gives a decent covering so it's fine for me for daily wear. But if I want to be more perfect or more precise about correcting the blue on my skin, I'll go for a peach or an orange based concealer corrector. 
So this will just work in colour theory by knocking out the blue because it's opposite the colour on the colour wheel. And then if I do use a corrective concealer, I'll often go over the top of that once it's settled into the skin with my normal brightening pink. Then if you have more of a purple, like a red based purple, and a lot of people can often be quite red underneath the skin because of the blood vessels and stuff in the area, that's when you'll use a yellow toned concealer under the eye. Be careful not to use yellow though if you're blue under the eye because it can often give a greenish cast because obviously if you mix yellow with blue, it gives you green. And now for the fifth and final step in the process, it's to set your base and obviously you usually use powder for this. So 95% of the time you can just go ahead and apply your powder straight away after, apl after applying your foundation. But there are some foundations out there that will feel a little bit sticky on your skin for a little while after applying it and it's best to let these kind of set a little bit on the skin before you apply your powder because if your base is too sticky and you go over with the powder particularly if it's a loose powder the powder will grab onto it and it can easily cake so you just be a little bit aware of that when you are powdering over your base. So my favourite powder of the moment is this L'Oreal Nude Magique BB Powder. It's a velvet, really velvety lovely powder. It's called the Velvet Skin Beautifier. Now it does come with a sponge underneath which I haven't been using I always, I always use my powder brush so this is actually the Real Techniques blush brush but it's huge it's big enough for powder so an important thing to remember when applying your powder whether it's with the brush or with a sponge if you're using your brush apply the powder to the side of the brush don't go into the powder with the top of your brush because you will ruin your brush it'll just cause the hairs to back up on top of themselves and they look horrible and disfigured and it's really hard to get them back into place and then start to press and roll your powder in place. So this is the same as if you were using a powder puff. You would always roll, press and roll. This way, by pressing it, it's really pressing the base into the skin. So it's gonna make it last longer, it's setting it in place. But also by not swiping over your unset base, you're not going to disrupt the concealer that you were very careful at applying earlier on. And you also won't leave any streaks on the skin with your brush hairs by dragging it over the skin. Obviously the softer the brush, the better. Make sure you get those areas that are a little bit harder to get at in around the nose. Sometimes it can be better to move on to a smaller brush like this for those little areas if you find that the bigger brush doesn't get into those little nooks and crannies. Then when I'm touching up throughout the day, I can swipe on the powder because I've already set it in place. But just for this first application, that's when you really want to be careful about how you apply the powder. I think everyone can benefit from using powder, even those with very, very dry skin who are frightened of powder. There are great powders out there nowadays. Something like this, which is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. This contains natural oils in it, so it's going to condition the skin. It's not going to dry it out. And anyone who's tried this can tell you that it's so finely milled, it does not look powdery on the skin. Another great one would be the Care Blend, Studio Care Blend by MAC as well. That also contains the natural oils in it, whereas the Studio Care Blend is matte. The mineralized skin finish has an ever so slight luminosity to it, the slightest, because it contains the most minuscule mineral particles in it because it is a mineral product. So if you do have dry skin, don't feel like you have to put it everywhere, but anywhere we feel like maybe your skin does tend to look blotchy throughout the day. Usually when you are a, a daily foundation wearer, you'll notice that there's some areas that tend to just wear away throughout the day. And these, these are, are often areas on the face that we touch, maybe without even thinking throughout the day. I tend to touch my chin a lot, and this is area an area where my foundation can disappear sometimes. Or some people tend to rub along their jawline, people blow on their nose, stuff like that. So just any of those areas, it's nice to set in place. But most people can always ben benefit from applying a little bit around this very central area here of the face just where you can get sweaty or oily. And for anyone who has very very oily skin, blot powder is great for those but again only apply it where you're at your oiliest. You have to be careful not to allow this to look cakey if you apply too much throughout the day. So I like to use my blotting powder only maybe every second time I touch up and then use blotting papers. So blotting papers are something that will absorb the oil on your skin without actually adding on any extra product. And then you just lightly press them against your skin and it will take away the oil and leave your makeup intact. 
but it's important to use these before the oil has become too crazy on your face and is already really mixed in with your foundation because then it will remove the foundation as well. Then the absolute final part of setting your foundation is this optional extra which is to use a setting spray. This one here is by Make Forever, it's the Mist and Fix. So this will act almost like a hairspray on your face. It will create a very subtle and invisible film on your face but it'll keep everything underneath in place. So I always spray away first just to make sure that it's working and that there's not going to be big blotches on my face and then just that's more than enough one or two maybe sometimes three very light sprays make sure you keep it away from your face like a good distance so that it's not going to leave big droplets of water or moisture on your face and then you just let that dry it'll dry naturally and then you're ready to go. There are plenty of setting sprays out there this one by Makeup Forever can leave an very very subtle sheen on the skin if you don't like that you can go for one that is more matte this is the model in a bottle makeup setting spray this has a matte finish so this one is great for anyone who's maybe more on the oily side who just doesn't like a shine to their face and then the last thing to remember would be sometimes you will need to do your eyes before you do your foundation if there's going to be a lot of fallout because if you've taken all this care to get your base perfect and then you move on to a smoky eye sometimes the smoky eye can just cause a lot of fallout and stuff and then you're going to have to wipe all this bit away to clean it up and it's just you know it can be a pain in the backside so do your eyes first in that case and then go ahead and do your base after that so i hope this was helpful guys thanks a million for watching i'll chat to you all really soon Salam.